When you first join Skyrim's Thieves Guild, the first thing that's drilled into your head is this. I don't want any of them killed. We can't turn a profit by killing. Next time, the bog stays alive. Of course, immediately after you join, Mercer sends you on what most players turn into an apicultural slaughter fest at Golden Glow Estate, murdering the owner along with the two dozen or so mercenaries he hired. Brynjolf even encourages you to murder him. But if he tries to stop you from getting the job done, kill him. But what if it didn't have to be this way? What if you could become the master of the Thieves Guild without killing anyone? That's what the goal of this challenge is. I want to become the leader of the Thieves Guild without killing any people, animals, creatures, undead, daedra, or automatons. So all these numbers under general stats need to remain at zero. However, if a hostile NPC were to die by means that don't result in one of those numbers increasing, then that's not my problem. With all that out of the way, let's get started. This is Frask. Fitting character for a pacifist run, I know. As a male Ultmer, Frask is the tallest possible height for a player character, making him the fastest for any evasive maneuvers I might need to make. In addition, his Altmeri blood gives him a nice big starting magic pool, which he'll definitely need. Frask's first task is to leave the ruins. Of Helgen Keep, of course. My foolproof plan is to simply run past any enemies while leaving Hadvar to fight all the Stormcloaks. Once I'm out of Helgen Keep, there's a lot that I'll need to do before heading to Riften. You see, in order to keep himself safe, Frask is going to need to become a master of illusion. When you cast a fury spell on another person, whoever they kill doesn't count towards your own kill score. Similarly, if the person you targeted with the fury spell ends up getting killed by another NPC, that also doesn't count towards your kill score. So you can essentially manipulate people into doing your dirty work for you while keeping your own hands clean. Also in the illusion school is the expert level invisibility spell, which makes you pretty much undetectable as long as your sneak skill is high enough. My main goal at this point in the game is to get lots of gold in order to buy spells and grind some illusion XP. After talking with Alvor, I had to ember shard mine and loot their chests. I deal with the bandits by tricking them into tripping over rocks. I head to Whiterun and win a fist fight with a bard in order to get some extra money. Being a pacifist just means I can't kill people. Beating them up is fair game. After doing a couple side quests and selling some valuable self brewed potions, I'm finally able to buy some spells off of Farangar. I go with Muffle, Oak Flesh, Healing Hands, and Calm for now. Muffle is the most important one here as it can level Illusion up pretty quickly. While on my way out of Farngar's study, Irleth rudely interrupts me and railroads me onto the main quest. Farngar sends me to Bleak Falls Barrow, which I put on the back burner. I run around Whiterun spamming the Muffle spell for the next 6 minutes or so, leveling my Illusion skill from 25, which is the starting level for an Altmar, to 39. I take a minute to do some experimentation with Uthgird because I'm curious to see whether kills by followers contributed to your own kill count. Turns out they do. I reload a previous save and tell Uthgird to go back to sitting in the corner at the Bannered Mare. We don't tolerate murder here. I do some more non-lethal shenanigans in the air around Whiterun. Turns out the Calm spell is far too powerful for its own good and I could just waltz around bandit camps like I own the place. I retrieve Amran Sword from Redoran's Retreat, which I'll use later as a testing ground for ways to kill people without making the people killed counter go up. At some point, I grind Illusion up to level 50 and a wizard appears at the front gate of Whiterun, challenging me to a duel. I use the Calm spell on him, but linger around for too long and he aggro's on me again, killing me with two shots. Yeah, I should have mentioned that I'm dumping all of my attribute increases into Magicka. Despite being level 9, I only have 120 HP. I return to Dragon's Reach to do some more muffle grinding to be able to defeat the wizard via city guard, but he seems to have disappeared from the area upon me returning. Regardless, I go back to spamming Muffle, join the College of Winterhold, and grind out some sneak XP near Fort Castav. Oh, and I also find these. It just works. Freaky. Anyway, after a lot of grinding, I've finally gotten my illusion skill to 70, which means Drevis Nellerin at the College has the invisibility spell to in stock. I, however, am broke, so I need to somehow find over 1500 gold. After a brief selling spree in Whiterun, I finally have the invisibility spell, so now I can join the Thieves Guild. Yes, this is where the video really starts. Nearly three and a half hours of raw footage and I can finally do what I set out to do in the first place. But this invisibility spell is huge since it's going to make the Thieves Guild questline far easier to do as a pacifist. So I travel to Riften for the first time and get approached by my future best friend about a plan to frame Bran Shea. The plan goes off without a hitch and Brynjolf invites me to the Ragged Flagon. I sneak past Hunan and Droth, get Jion out of the picture by tricking him into running into the bear traps, and for some reason decide to put a paw on this lowlife's head. I make it to the flagon in one piece, and Brynjolf gives me my initiation task. Beat up some business owners for protection money. 
This was very easy to do in a non-lethal manner, and Brynjolf fully inducts me into the Thieves' Guild. I meet with the Guild Master, and he sends me to Golden Glow Estate, where I'll need to clear out their safe and burn only three of the six beehives on their property. This was apparently too dangerous of a mission for Vex, a seasoned thief with decades of experience. Hold on, what does Mercer say right before his boss fight? When Brynjolf brought you before me, I could feel a sudden shift in the wind. And at that moment, I knew it would end with one of us at the end of a blade. Yeah, he's sending me on a suicide mission. Well, there's no time to waste. On my way out of the Ratway, I use a Fury spell to get the lowlife to kill Hunan and Droff, then trick her into walking into Gion's traps. This will make it so that I don't have to calm everyone every time I want to walk through the Ratway. Uh, damn wizard, keep your spells off of me. I swim across the lake and infiltrate the grounds of Golden Glow Estate. This is where all that illusion grinding starts to come in handy. With my invisibility spell, the mercenaries are completely oblivious to my presence as long as I keep my magic sheathed. Damn! Where'd you go? I successfully infiltrate the main building and start looting the place. Again, my invisibility spell proves to be invaluable and the guards lose sight of me as soon as I cast it. I make my way to the basement to clear out the safe and move upstairs to Arngoth's office to steal the bonus Queen Bee statue for Delvin. I then exit the main building, cast invisibility again to get the mercs off my trail and head for the beehives, carefully making sure to burn only three of them. With my mission complete, I make my way back to Riften to talk to Brynjolf. He says that the document I took from the safe says that Golden Glow Estate was sold to an unknown buyer, and that's why they weren't cooperating with the guild. Bryn then directs me to the Bee and Barb to speak with Maven, who in turn directs me to Malice Machias in Whiterun. At the Bannered Mayor, Malice fills me in on his plan. I'm going to pose as a hapless adventurer offering to take care of the Skeever infestation at the Hunting Bird Meadery, then sneak through the tunnels, poison the nest, and use the rest of the poison to taint the mead vat right before Commander Caius' visit, resulting in Sabjorn getting arrested and Malice taking over. Now that I know what I need to do, I head to the Hunting Bird Meadery to speak to Sabjorn, who gives me the poison and the key to the cellar. Once inside the cellar, I use the plethora of bear traps to take out the Skeever. Fun fact, you can hold the activate button to drag him around. Anyway, I continue through the cellar using a combination of traps and fury spells to make any pests die without directly killing them. However, I realized that this wasn't the best approach to deal with the crazy wizard living in the tunnel, so I decided to reload. This time, I let all the skeevers into Hamlin's chamber and cast a fury spell on him so he would be mobbed by his own pets. They chunked his health down a little bit, but not much. I then resorted to using a fear spell on him and chasing him into the traps for the next six minutes, and that seems to have done the trick. I head on to the boilery, poison the mead, and return to the tap room to let Sabjorn know I've finished the job. Sabjorn seems to have somehow taken a keg of the mead I tainted less than a minute ago without me even seeing him. Why am I the one in the Thieves' Guild here? This guy's a master of stealth. Anyway, Commander Caius drinks the tainted mead, Sabjorn gets arrested, and Malice becomes the new manager. I also steal a document that states that an unknown individual has invested a healthy sum of gold into Hunting Brew in order to make them more competitive with Maven, presumably the same person that bought out Golden Glow based on this little dagger symbol. Anyway, I make my way back to Riften and talk to Maven, who gives me an enchanted iron dagger for all my hard work. Well, at least I can disenchant it for enchanting XP. In the rat way, Mercer is trying to get behind whoever's throwing a wrench in all the guild's plans, and he thinks he has a lead, Golemi and Solitude. Before I talk to Golemai though, I head out to get a few spells. First, I go to Winterhold to buy Fenric's Welcome from Drevis, an illusion spell which makes it so that I can instantly unlock any lock, expert level or lesser, without having to pick it. I also go to Redwater Den to pick up a Telekinesis Tome before heading to Solitude. This will come in handy later. In Solitude, Golemai offers to tell me about his partner in crime if I get him some wine from the Blue Palace. Easy task. Upon returning, he gives me a non-answer and sets off for the East Empire Company warehouse. This is one of my least favorite Thieves Guild quests because it really just amounts to walk all the way across Solitude, take some wine, walk all the way back, then watch the Reptile Man slowly make his way to the docks. The section in the warehouse kind of makes up for it. Creeping along these shelves does make for a fun stealth mission. Anyways, I follow Golem through a doorway and into a cave full of bandits. 
I managed to sneak past most while invisible, but there are a few guarding him, so I cast Fury on them so that Golem will do all the killing for me. While he manages to hold his own for a solid minute, Golem eventually loses all his health and, being essential, runs away from the fight. Having not invested in any Courage spell, I cast a Fear spell on the high-level bandit and she runs away so I can finally talk to Golem. Now there's no need to do anything rash. This isn't as bad as it seems. I was gonna tell Mercer about everything. Honestly. Please. Unfortunately, our conversation gets interrupted as the bandit that had run away had alerted everyone else of our presence. Thankfully, I'm able to exit the conversation and find a place to hide. Golem appears to have taken the same approach and we can continue our conversation once the coast is clear. Anyway, Golem tells me that his business partner is Carlia, who had allegedly murdered the previous guildmaster, Gallus, and that she said she was going to where the end began. I bring the information I got from Gollum to Mercer, who tells me that where the end began could only refer to Snowvale Sanctum, where Carlia had allegedly murdered Gallus, and has me meet him there. After a short walk from the Whistling Mine, Mercer unlocks the seemingly sealed door and tells me to lead the way. Alrighty then. This is where it becomes a bit tricky. After sneaking through the dungeon as I normally would, Pull the chain over there and watch out for the spikes. Looks like Carlia reset all of the traps. I realized something. As I was going through this dungeon, Mercer was considered my follower, meaning that every time he kills a Draugr, that kill counts towards my general stat score. So I had to think a way out of this. On my second attempt, I reload the save and sneak ahead of Mercer as fast as I can. I then get stuck trying to find a chain to a portcullis while Mercer fights the Draugr on his own. As soon as I find it, I reload the save again. On my third attempt, I sneak on ahead through the rest of that section of the dungeon, past the chain I got stuck on, and into a room with multiple exits. I pick the wrong one, check my stats, and see that I have one undead killed. Regardless, I scout out the rest of that section of the dungeon before trying again. On my fourth attempt, I unsuccessfully try to get Mercer stuck on some map geometry before moving on ahead. This time, I forego any semblance of stealth and hightail it through the ruin. In the Bone Chime room, I hear Mercer unsheath his sword, which doesn't sound good. However, upon reaching the next area of the dungeon, I check my stats only to see that Mercer hasn't killed any Draugr, so I can proceed normally. So now it's time to run through this section. I manage to get to the claw puzzle before Mercer can kill any Draugr, but after a bit of waiting around, he manages to get just one and I have to reload. On my second attempt to run through the second section, instead of going for any treasure or the word wall in the last room, I go right for the puzzle door and hide from the boss. After a bit of waiting, I turn the corner back towards the boss room to see Mercer sneaking towards me. I check my stats to see a beautiful goose egg right in the undead killed row, which I wasn't sure was even possible at that point. Anyway, Mercer Lock picks the door open and Carlia paralyzes me, locking me into a cutscene that I've probably seen half a dozen times before at least. Carlia was framed, Mercer killed Gallus, he stabs you so that you don't rat him out, and I'm on my phone the whole time. Carlia saves me and tells me that she came here in the first place for Gallus' journal, and that she baited Mercer here to paralyze him instead of me and bring him in front of the guild alive to testify for his betrayal. Problem is, Gallus' journal is in some unknown language and needs to be translated. Carlia suggests we go to the College of Winterhold and speak to Enthir, an old friend of Gallus. In Winterhold, Enthir explains that it's the language of the ancient Falmer and points us in the direction of Calcimo and Markarth, who may be able to translate it. With that information, I go straight to Markarth by carriage, ignore Margaret getting stabbed, and pop into Calcimo's little work area. Knowing he won't give me the key to his lab unless I kill a spider for him, I just pickpocket it right off him and head to his lab. In Calcimo's lab, I run around evading the guards and stealing as many pieces of bent Dwemer scrap metal and Dwemer plate metal as I can find, as they might be useful for grinding smithing XP later on. The invisibility spell is also an invaluable resource for getting the guards off my tail. I decloak in front of Icontar, a supposedly powerful wizard, and he just screams and runs away, leaving me to loot the area with free reign. Anyway, I make it up to Calcimo's tower, do some more looting, make a rubbing of the Fulmeri Rosetta Stone, and escape behind the guards' backs. I then head to the smelter to get rid of all my Dwemeri scrap metal and unlock Mirwatch so I can store it all somewhere. After that, I travel to Winterhold to talk to Enthir again, who says a funny line. A rubbing, eh? Odd. I expected notes. 
and translates the journal, which says that Mercer had apparently been stealing from the guild for years, and that he had desecrated the Twilight Sepulchre, a temple of the Daedric Prince Nocturnal. Carlyle explains that she, Mercer, and Gallus were all Daedra worshippers, and tells me to meet her at the Ragged Flagon to bring the translated journal to the rest of the guild. We go to Riften to tell the guild the truth, and while not particularly happy to see her, they don't murder Carlyle on sight, so that's a good sign. They open the seemingly impenetrable vault, only to find that it's been emptied out. So Brynjolf has me snoop around Mercer's house to find clues as to where he's gone. In order to get into Mercer's house, I just use Fenric's welcome on the gate, which causes Vald to attack me. I try using a guard as a meat shield, but that doesn't seem to work, so I just cast fear on him. Once I'm in Mercer's house, I just use calm on the bandits inside and steal everything, including his glass sword and, most importantly, the heist plans he left on his desk. I then bring the plans to Brynjolf, who says he's going to Erkingthan to steal the eyes of the Falmer and that we have to stop him. But before that, it's time for me to do some experimentation. During the final fight with Mercer, it's just going to be me and him since Bryn and Carlyle are going to be too busy fighting each other. With that, I need to find a way to make him die without killing him. My first plan is to use the same tactic as I did at Embershard Mine at the very beginning, Collision Physics. You see, while I was stuck in Gullamai, I was also raiding the East Empire Company warehouse for cheese, which is a nice big item that doesn't weigh too much. After playing around with Telekinesis for a bit, I go to Redoran's Retreat to try out my new battle tactic. After meticulously setting up my cheese trap and a choke point, I alert the bandit's guard dog, who chases me through the trap a few times, each run through gradually chipping away at his health until he dies. So far, so good. Next, the bandit. This time I start using my telekinesis spell to chuck wheels of cheese at him. He's an archer, so I doubt he'll be willing to chase me through the cheesy choke. Since this is just a test, I turn on god mode through the console and continue chucking cheese wheels at him, since telekinesis is not a very mana efficient spell. After he dies, I check my stats to see that throwing objects at people does in fact count as killing them. Or so I think. I do a bit more testing at Red Iron's Tree. I use Telekinesis to chuck an iron kettle at the guard dog, who dies, then a two-handed orc, who also dies. Checking my stats, neither of those kills counted. I then kill the archer, and for some reason his death did count, whereas the other two did not. So I figure it's just inconsistent. Also during my testing session at Red Iron's Retreat, I hit this. And yes, that didn't count as a kill. Anyway, the best way I currently know how to kill Mercer is by making him trip on stuff and throwing stuff at him. So it's time to begin my preparations. I grind block XP by harassing this giant from under a bridge, then lead him to Fort Greymore before returning to business. Before I can go to Erkingthand, I need to sell my soul to a Daedric Prince or else we'll have really bad luck or something. Well, at least I get some cool armor out of it. After that, I travel to Erkingthand to finally stop Mercer, but I make a permanent save just outside in case it goes wrong. Now, I forgot to record this part, but that's kind of okay since it's a failed attempt. What you're seeing here is just a reenactment. So, I went through Erkingthand as normal, staying invisible to keep the robots off me. I meet up with Brynn and Carlyle in the second section of the dungeon, who are supposed to follow me throughout. Now, since they count as followers, any Falmer or robots they kill count towards my kill count, so I really just need to run ahead of them faster than they can keep up. Thankfully, they stop for a moment right at the beginning to watch Mercer on the streets below so I can get a good head start. It takes two attempts in the second section and one attempt in the third section to get to Mercer without my followers killing anything. I begin the fight with Mercer, intending to chip his health to a sliver with Chillrend and then let the boulders that fell from the cave roof finish the job. Mercer doesn't fall for my pathing trickery, so I resort to dropping items in places that he runs through often. That doesn't work either, so I try using Telekinesis to throw random objects at it. Unfortunately, the earthquakes throw off my aim, as well as any object physics along with it, and Mercer's health regenerates rather quickly. Before ditching this attempt, I realized that I wasn't even recording, which I took as a sign to just fold my hand and reload the permanent save I made just outside of Working Thand. So I needed to find another way to kill Mercer. I did a bit of googling and found a reddit post by Yimfa, who made their own video on how to pacifist Skyrim, which I highly recommend, that detailed ways to kill people without killing them. Apparently using unrelenting force to make someone fall to their death doesn't count as killing them. However, in order to get Unrelenting Force, I'd need the Dragonstone, meaning I'd also need to kill the boss of Blake Falls Barrow. It seemed like the most effective way to kill him would be to use Illusion Magic to get the other Draugr to attack him. However, Illusion spells don't work on Undead unless you have the Master of the Mind perk, which you can unlock at Illusion level 90. 
This concerned me for a moment until I realized that my illusion skill was already 75, so it wouldn't be a very Herculean task. So I did some miscellaneous non-lethal adventuring for about half an hour, which got me up to illusion level 80, then went to the college to see if Drevis could train me. 4,000 gold for one level? Oh, hell no, it'd be faster to spam Muffle than it would be to raise enough money for 10 levels. So that's what I ended up doing. After about 12 minutes of grinding, I'm finally able to unlock Master of the Mind, which allows my illusion spells to work on Daedra, robots, and most importantly, undead. With that, I'm finally off to Bleak Falls Barrow to retrieve the Dragonstone for Farngar. At level 22. I've never actually done Bleak Falls Barrow at that high of a level before, so I'm interested to see what's in store. Anyway, if you've played Skyrim half as much as I have, you probably know Bleak Falls like the back of your hand, so I won't bore you with all the details. Like I've been doing, I just go invisible and sneak past everyone undetected until I get to the boss's room. On my first attempt to kill the boss, I stupidly try to use a frenzy spell on him, bait him into the previous room, and get his underlings to kill him for me. Either he is stronger than I anticipated, or his underlings are weaker than I anticipated because he cuts through them like butter. I reload and change my strategy up a bit. This time, I use Chilren's unique enchantment to stunlock him and whittle away his health until he has just a sliver left, then bait him into the previous room and frenzy him. This seems to work, and I'm able to get the Dragonstone back to Farngar. Ah, the Dragonstone Farngar. Yurleth interrupts our conversation to tell us that Miramilnir is attacking the Western Watchtower, so it's time to kill him. And by kill him, I of course mean let the guards do the killing for me. After that's over with, I suck up his soul, which means I'm the chosen one, and I need to talk to the Greybeards so they can eventually give me the weapon I need to defeat Mercer. I make a quick stop at Mirwatch to drop off some loot, then fast travel to Redwater Den, walk to Iverson, and climb up the Throat of the World. I also make sure to read all the plaques along the way, as that will make the animals that are typically hostile ignore you for 24 IRL hours. Anyway, the Greybeards give me some boring trials and send me to Ustengrav to get the horn that Delphine's probably currently in the process of stealing. I go to Ustengrav, let the wizards and the Draugr fight amongst themselves, then leave with Delphine's note and travel to Riverwood. Delphine gives me the horn and tells me to meet her in Kynesgrove. I don't. Instead, I bring the horn right to the Greybeard to teach me the final word in Unrelenting Force. In order to test this shout's non-lethal killing abilities, I test it out on the infamous High Hrothgar Frost Troll, and he falls to his death without contributing to my kill count. Perfect. I travel back to Erkingthan to finish what I had started. Like the previous time, I sneak through the first section undetected, meeting Bryn and Carlyle right at the beginning of the second section. I run ahead while they're distracted by Mercer, and I once again manage to sneak through both sections of the dungeon without any Falmer being killed by my companions. Now it's time for the real fight with Mercer. I bait him to a high point on the statue, then use Chilrent to stunlock him and reduce his health to a sliver. Then I use Unrelenting Force to launch him off the statue and check my stats to make sure that... Oh... Let's try that again. Shout him off just right. Nope, still says I kill him. I think I see what's going on here. I reduced his health too much, which means that the minuscule amount of damage that the shout itself does is what kills him. So let's just quick load. Wait, that was the quick save key. Damn it. Since the game doesn't auto save when you enter Mercer's boss arena, I have to load back into the third section of the dungeon. I thought it would be a problem since I was worried that Bryn and Carlyle would start killing all the Falmer while I ran ahead, but thankfully that didn't happen and I made it to Mercer's arena with a clean kill count. Anyway, I bait him to the top of the statue and shot him off while he's at full health, and that manages to cause him to die without me having killed him. So at last, I can finally grab the skeleton key and the eyes of the Falmer off of him and make a break for the surface. Once we're on dry ground, Carlyle gives me the rundown on how to return the key to the sepulchre. Apparently, Mercer sealed the main entrance by stealing the skeleton key, so I have to take the back entrance, known as the Pilgrim's Path. I fast travel to the Half Moon Mill and make my way southwest across the forests. Once inside the Twilight Sepulchre, I meet up with the ghost of Gallus and he gives me some tips on how to get through. Once I find a journal with some riddles in it, I'm finally ready to traverse the Pilgrim's Path. The Nightingale Spectres can be tough to fight in a normal playthrough, but being practically undetectable at any given time has its advantages. I breeze through the room with the Path of Shadows, shut the lights off near the Nocturnal Statue, and use the Skeleton Key to unlock the Master Lock door. Once I get into the Inner Sanctum, I jump down this hole and wait around for a minute so Frask can learn how to use the Skeleton Key to manipulate reality. Once the pit opens up under me, I return the key to the lock inside the floor, which summons Nocturnal herself. Nocturnal sarcastically congratulates me for doing what I was supposed to do and offers me some cool powers. So let's take a minute to recap how far our Frask here has gotten. After escaping Helgen, he spent a lot of time grinding Illusion up to level 70, 
unlocked the power to become invisible, helped Bryn with his scheme at the market, beat up some shopkeepers for protection money, infiltrated Golden Glow State, framed Sabjorn for health code violations, tailed Golemai, snuck through Snowvale Sanctum, got betrayed by Mercer then saved by Carlia, infiltrated Calcimo's lab, translated Gallus' journal, revealed the truth about Mercer to the guild, snuck into Mercer's house, discovered his plans to steal the eyes of the farmer from Erkingthand, failed at his first attempt to kill Mercer, spent some more time grinding Illusion up to level 90, unlocked the ability to manipulate the undead, retrieved the Dragonstone for Bleak Falls Barrow, helped the guards kill Mirmolnir, discovered he was the Dragonborn, trained with the Greybeards at High Hrothgar, snuck through Ustengrav, met Delphine, returned the horn to the Greybeards, learned the last word of Unrelenting Force, returned to Erkingthand, shouted Mercer off the statue, and returned the skeleton key to the Twilight Sepulcher, all with a total kill count of zero. So the Thieves Guild questline is over, right? Right? The goal of this challenge was to become the Guild Master of the Thieves Guild, not just to complete the main storyline. In order to become the Guild Master, I need to restore the Guild to full strength by doing a bunch of Radiant quests for Delvin and Vex. For every five quests I complete in a specific city, I'll receive a special mission there from Delvin. So by my rough estimate, I did about two hours in real time of just grinding out numbers and heist jobs for this. My first special job is to talk to Torsten Krulsey in Windhelm. He says that his daughter was murdered a few months ago by a rival guild of Altmer thieves who stole a family heirloom that he wants back. He says that Naranya, a local merchant, is a good place to start. I talk to Naranya, who says that the leader threatened to kill her if she didn't fence for them, and that they're holed up in Uttering Hill's cave. She also seems to switch voice actors mid-conversation. Their leader, Linway, he's the worst of the lot. He steals valuables from the dead. No, Linwe prefers stealing from the deceased. Digs up the corpses, breaks into the Hall of the Dead. Anyway, I travel west to Uttering Hill's cave. Outside the cave, I use Fury on one of the shadows to make them fight. Then once one of them is dead, I take out the other one by baiting him up a slope and shouting him off. It's much the same story inside the cave. Use Fury, remain hidden, then repeat until it's just the boss, Linwe. With Linwe, I just shout him down the staircase and that seems to do the trick just fine. I retrieve the Cruel Seas family heirloom, burn the Shadow's banner, and return to Torsten, who thanks me for a job well done. Anyway, it's back to the grind. It doesn't take long until I get my second job. Delvin sends me to Markarth to talk to Endon, the silversmith. In Markarth, Endon tells me that he had ordered a silver mold that got robbed by some bandits operating out of a cottage called Pinewatch near Falkreath. He also says that the Thieves Guild were the only group that were actually willing to take up this job for him. I travel to Pinewatch, which turns out to have a massive Nordic ruin underneath the cottage. I sneak through, casting fury on the bandits to make them fight each other while slipping away undetected. I cast fury on the boss, Regal, and let her underlings kill her for me. I then loot the key to the treasure room off of her and carefully jump over all the pressure plates so as not to set off one of the myriad of traps. Once I'm in the treasure room, I take Endon's silver mold, along with everything else, escape the cottage, and return to Endon, who thanks me and says he'd be willing to fence any stolen goods for me. Another job well done. After a couple more side jobs, I'm sent to Whiterun to speak with Ulfred Battleborn, who needs me to clear his incarcerated friend's name. Specifically, he's due for execution in solitude, and Ulfred needs me to seal his warrant from Preventus Avenici and give him new identity in the prison registry. This is probably the easiest of the special jobs, since at this point in the game you're probably already Thane of Whiterun and you already have unrestricted access to Dragon's Reach. Anyway, the plan goes off without a hitch and Ulfred thanks me for my effort. After that, I take on a few more side jobs. Tonili gives me some drugs and tells me to give it to Risad in order to get the Khajiiti caravans to fence for us. I talk to Risad, who is stuck in the ground, and he accepts my offer. It just works. I also recover some journals from a Nordic ruin for Vekel. I don't think these are required to become Guildmaster, but I might as well do them anyway. 
My last job is to talk to Eriker in Solitude, who wants to frame the captain of the Dainty Sloan for smuggling drugs. I'll need to get a bottle of Balmora Blue Skuma from Sabine by the docks and plant it in the captain's footlocker. I pickpocket the key to the skooma chest from Sabine and start looking for it underwater. After finding it, I grab the contraband and sneak aboard the Dainty Sloan. Again, invisibility makes my job so much easier, and I plant the skooma without a hitch and return to Eriker, who is now present in the Jarl's court. Eriker and I loudly talk about having broken the law right in front of Jarl Elisif and her thanes, but thankfully none of them seem to care. Eriker expresses his gratitude for my effort and tells me to give Delvin his regards. And now, having restored the Thieves' Guild to full strength, it's time for Frask to finally become the Guildmaster. Look, I've never been good at these things, so I'm just going to keep it short. Being Guildmaster means more than just getting a cut of all the loot. It's about being a leader and keeping this rabble in order. With that in mind, I propose that the position of Guildmaster should be yours. Delvin? Agree. Sure, why not? Carlyle. Absolutely. Everyone is in agreement. So all I can do now is name you Guildmaster. I wish you good fortune and long life. Now everyone, get back to work. Brynjolf gives me the Amulet of Articulation, and Tonili gives me my signature black armor, and at last my challenge is complete. I have become the master of the Thieves' Guild without directly killing any people, animals, creatures, undead, daedra, or automatons. This was actually quite a fun challenge, and it might be fun to see if I could do another guild's questline this way. Now, I do also have to give a special thanks to Yimfa for making the reddit post that basically saved this challenge. I would have been completely lost had that resource not been at my disposal. And thanks for watching! Oh, I should also mention that while recording the reenactment of my failed attempt at Urkingthand, I actually managed to kill Mercer with item physics. So I didn't even need to get through the main quest. Great use of time. <laughs>